Welcome, my name is Bjorn. Thank you for joining me. We're gonna be looking today at my Inquisitor build. Before I jump into it though, I gotta say, this character, they're pretty evil. You might be able to find a way to play this character to be more neutral, but uh, I need to put a little bit of a warning here with any evil character, especially if you're new to the game. Make sure you speak with your dungeon master and you, you get out what you want to play and that your character actually has a purpose for being there and that you're probably not gonna end up torturing your party and killing one of them, but that you know, it's enough rambling on about evil characters and role-playing that out and not being a dick at the table. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I decided to go Oath of Conquest Paladin, uh, level 11, the College of Whispers Bard, level 6, and the Inquisitive Rogue, level 3. Now, because of the, uh, the multi-classing, we are going to require some minimum stats. For the Paladin, it is going to be a Strength of 13 and a Charisma of 13. For the Bard, it will be a Charisma of 13, and for the Rogue, it will be a Dexterity of 13. This character, I'm lending it towards being a a dexterity build. Of course, you can play this as a strength build, but just make sure you do either go strength or dexterity with this and get your minimum for either. And of course, for uh, your next highest stat, you're probably going to want to put that into charisma. Now for the race of choice here, I decided to go with the Dark Elf Drow. One thing I'm going to mention here that's uh, kind of funny is that uh, this doesn't actually give you the undercommon language. So I don't know if that's like a bug or a glitch or something, but yeah, it just, it doesn't give you the undercommon language, so just assume that you have it because you are a drow. Of course, though, with this, we gain a uh, plus two to our dexterity, and we also gain a plus one to our charisma, lending ourselves more towards being that dexterous build. Along with this, we gain superior dark vision. However, we also gain sunlight sensitivity. So this is an interesting thing that we're going to have to deal with. Thankfully, though, um, we are playing in Dungeons and Dragons. There's probably going to be a lot of cases in which we aren't going to be in direct sunlight. And of course, we gain the Drown Magic, so we gain the Dancing Light Cantrip. Uh, we gain the Fairy Fire spell, which is amazing. And then we also gain the uh, the Darkness spell, which uh, both of these we can cast uh, once per day. As for the background, because I'm going with an Inquisitor build, and I'm going with a, uh, a Paladin of Loth, um, I decided to go with a Courtier. I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right. Mainly because I felt like this would be fit to my roleplay with I am seeking out people like other Drow, primarily in this case, would be that the ones that don't follow Loth, because... I'm not going to get too much into the lore of it, but Loth wants to be the one and only ruler of the Drow Gods, but then there's the Drow Pantheon. Maybe I'm searching out priests just and people who follow uh, Elistre. Elistre is an act a good Drow God. I'm just searching out for uh, the ones who are not following Loth, and I punish them, and then I kill them, and then... Now, this is getting dark. Anyways, with this, we gain our deception and our stealth. We gain a few languages of choice. Now, let's go ahead and get into a leveling guide. So, first level, we gain a few proficiencies. I decided to go with insight and intimidation. We gain divine sense, lay on hands, they're very useful abilities. And then at second level, we get to choose a fighting style. With this character, I'm going to be going probably with a rapier since I'm a dex build. And I'm also going to be going with a shield. So, I've decided to go with the dueling here. We also gain divine smite, a very powerful ability. And then coming down to third level, we get to choose our sacred oath. So I decided to go with Oath of the Conquest here over, say, Oath of uh, Devotion. I could see you maybe playing an Oath of the Devotion for Loth, that's for sure. But I felt like this was befitting that uh, it has, for example, its channel divinity. We have Conquering Presence. Essentially, uh, we scare the shit out of people. And then later down the line, that go goes alongside with our Aura of Conquest. This class focuses on uh, scaring the shit out of people and bending uh, their will to our own. Also, with this, we gain a, a plus for another channel divinity guided strike this is a beautiful channel divinity for us coming down to fourth level we gain our first feat i decided to go with elven accuracy here um i decided to bump up the charisma score so in this world where i happen to have rolled two 18s my dexterity and my charisma are both now at 20 so i don't need to worry about that anymore also this is uh this is an extremely extremely powerful feat giving yourself super advantage like that's fucking awesome and at 5th level, we gain our extra attack, and this could be a point of which you uh, jump off the train of Paladin, and you could go into Bard or Rogue. Interesting jumping off points for uh, when to multi-class. It's either here at 5th level, it's, or it's either at 6th uh, level to gain Aura of Protection, or 7th level to gain the Aura of Conquest, or because you're so close to the ASI, 8th would make sense to jump off too. Regardless, let's pretend we stick with the Paladin, so at 
So at 6th level, we gain the Aura of Protection, pretty useful for us and for our group. 7th level, we gain the Aura of Conquest, so essentially whenever we scare something, they can't move. I really like that. Um, it's it's really intimidating. 8th level, we gain a new feat. If you're looking purely to power game with this build, because we are going to uh, a, a full dexterity, and uh, we're going to be using a shield, our AC is going to be about uh, 26, I believe, with a studded leather plus 3 and a shield plus 3, and then all of a sudden we have this where we can add our uh, proficiency bonus to our AC as a reaction. We're going to be about uh, a 32 AC. So if you're looking purely to power game, I would recommend going with Offensive Duelist. If not, I'm also looking towards going with the Medium Armor Master here. I really like, I, I don't have many, I haven't had any characters that use uh, Medium Armor. I kind of want to play a, a character that has Medium Armor, so, so I'm probably going to end up going with this. At 10th level, we gain the Aura of Courage. At 11th level, we gain Improved Divine Smite, so we're going to be able to consistently do an additional 1d8 radiant damage to our targets whenever we hit them. Uh, moving off of the Oath of the Conquest Paladin, uh, we can either go into the Inquisitive Rogue or the Bard. Both bring uh, unique features to this class that I felt that really benefited a character that's looking to uh, seek out knowledge and to figure out uh, people's secrets, and it really befits that, uh, that side of this character. So let's go into the College of Whispers. So as we can see here, we gain a new proficiency. I decided to go with the loot because it only makes sense, right? And uh, this is where we get our persuasion. I want to not only just uh, intimidate people, but I want to like persuade them to whatever. If you are going to be playing this character in a setting in which you are in fact a drow and you're not in like the Underdark all the time, you're probably going to be questioned a lot because you're a drow and nobody trusts drow for good reason. So you're probably going to need to lie a lot with this character, and you're probably going to need to do um, a lot of persuading that you're not here for them, you're not here for whatever, you're here for your own cause, your own goals, and that you're not going to like hurt them or whatever, but even then, that might not be enough. Moving on, we gain some Bardic Inspirations, pretty useful. Then coming into the second level, we gain the Jack of All Trades. I really like Jack of All Trades. It's a very powerful ability to have. We also gain the Song of Rest. This is pretty uh, useful. I mean, use it whenever you can. And then at third level, we get to choose our Bardic College. This is where we go with the College of Whispers. Continuing on with that theme of scaring the shit out of people, uh, we gain the uh, the Words of Terror here. If we uh, speak to a human alone for at least one minute, we can attempt to seek, uh, seed paranoia into its mind. At the end of the conversation, the target must succeed on a Wisdom saving throw against their Spell Save DC or be frightened of you or another creature of your choice. The target is frightened of this way for one hour until attacked or damaged or until it witnesses its allies being blah, 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 blah. So this is a way in which you may be able to manipulate people through fear and to, like, this is... You're seeding literal fear amongst the populace. This could be a way for you to get information out of people. And of course, we also gain Psychic Blades. This is awesome. We're able to use our Bardic Inspiration to deal an additional Psychic damage to targets. So by the end with this class, we'll be able to do 3d6 because we will be above 5th level with this character. And at 3rd level, we also get to choose an Expertise. I decided to go with Persuasion and Insight. At 4th level, we gain a new ASI. I decided to go with uh, the Resilient Constitution here. If instead of uh, you going with defensive duelist up there and you wanted to go with the half plate like myself you could go with defensive duelist here as well so it, it's kind of a hard choice i might just go with defensive duelist here and have an insane ac whenever we want at fifth level we gain the font of inspiration so on a short rest now we can regain our bardic inspiration very very beneficial and then at sixth level we gain counter charm this can be uh, selectively useful but then we also gain the mantle of whispers essentially after we kill something we can take on their shadow form and when we do this we gain certain knowledge of uh, that creature that we've killed like when we're able to pose as that creature and speak certain information that the NPC would have only known and so this will further help our goals with infiltrating and uh, seeking out the heretics of the, the drow society finally we are now going to go into our inquisitive rogue again you can interchange these whenever with the proficiencies I decided to go with investigation and then we get to expertise a few things I decided to go with the deception and intimidation furthering us into that uh, intimidating and dece deceptful uh asshole we also gain sneak attack at first level very useful thieves can't could be beneficial for us second level we gain cutting action extraordinarily useful ability for us and at third level we get to choose our roguish archetype so if this we go with the inquisitive and we gain the insightful fighting so we're able to make a wisdom insight check against a creature's deception check and if we succeed we can uh we can just use our sneak attack so this is uh very beneficial for this character i felt like it befit the role play more so than just a straight power gamey 
It's very beneficial, but it very much, in my mind, fits the role play of which we're able to gain an insight on a person, and we're able to exploit their weaknesses, use that for our own benefit. Not to get too dark here, but like, if you ever are torturing somebody, you could use this for an advantage for like a persuasion check or intimidation check, I'm not sure. That's gonna be a, a more of a house rule -y kind of thing in the moment. You're gonna have to talk to your DM about, but this, it, this character is pretty dark. And then we also gain ear for deceit, so we're better able to uh, determine if people are lying, because now if we roll anything under a 7, we're able to treat that as an 8. So this is like a pseudo uh, reliable talent that we gain here at uh, early levels, and I really like that we gain this benefit. So we, we just remain more insightful than we normally would have. And with uh, us being at level 3 rogue, our sneak attack is going to be a 2d6, so not bad. It's a consistent uh, damage that we should be able to do each round. Yeah, so this character, pretty simple, not much uh, not much to it, really. We gain a lot of uh, auras, a lot of different things, we scare the shit out of people, we're seeking out knowledge. This character, I felt like I wanted to focus on damage and what could benefit the character as a roleplay scenario, and still at the same time be able to do a lot of damage, benefit the group in whatever way, really lends itself towards an evil campaign, so keep that in mind, any sort of Inquisitor, like, it's it'd be very difficult to... Be a good aligned inquisitor like i'm trying to think of how you'd be able to torture somebody and claim that as a good thing like that that's not good in case that's something that you're looking for here you go <laughs> i feel like i just handed like a toddler a gun that's like a dirty feeling you know not to say okay i just insulted everyone whatever i'll go with it but yeah um so this character could be very fun um as for equipment, as we can see here, our AC is up to a, uh, a 26. It's pretty decent. That's thanks to us going with the half plate route. It's interesting, I was looking at it too, if we go with the studded leather route, we only get an AC of 25, but if we go with the half plate, it actually goes up to 26. So half plate is a bit better if you want a higher AC. Then of course for, you know, increasing that further, we could go with a ring of protection, getting that up to a 27. And then if we want to increase our proficiency bonus, go with Iun Stone of Mastery. So whenever we use our reaction for defensive duelist in this case, we're going to be at a 34 AC, which is insanely high. But um, that's, this is very like down the road, level 20. I really like the skill layout, persuasion, uh, intimidation, insight, and deception. Uh, I did gain proficiency in stealth, and I, I really like being able to stealth around. And that's another reason why I didn't want to use plate with this character. I felt like stealth really benefited the playstyle of an Inquisitor, where they're able to gather information without being known. And I felt like that lent itself more as opposed to just wearing plate. So yeah, I hope that this um, maybe inspired someone to make a character to go torture some NPCs? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about saying that, but you know, whatever. If that's the, the, the play that you're looking for, if that's what your, your group's doing, go for it. Have fun with it, you know? Don't torture your, your party members unless it's agreed upon. In which case, that's getting really weird. But yeah, thank you for coming by and watching. Have a great one, and uh, consider liking, subscribing, or whatever. Still getting used to saying that myself. Thank you again, and have a great day. Bye-bye.